lot of changes to the world. As you'll have probably noticed, a whole bunch of the water-based island maps were removed. And it is, uh, it is my great um, joy to tell you that there are no more island chained with, islands chained with bridges. The bridges are gone. There are no more random islands. There are several new inland maps. Um, so uh, to kind of a, account for this uh, on the west coast, as we added some on the east coast, um, the fingers has been sort of rearranged into more of an island map as it was kind of intended to be originally. So there's a lot more water. Uh, there's a lot more open ocean, and they're not all chained together uh, by bridges. Having the interior maps still allows us allowed us to expand out and create more ocean maps. A lot of riverways were widened and, and, and made a little bit more traversable, and a lot of work was done also to support underwater gameplay. I also want to clarify a point. We haven't um, removed bridges. Um, they're just, they're, they're just there are just, bridges just, in the game. The just bridges in the, still exist. Just in the islands. <laughs> they're all gone. Yeah, no, never again. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so here you can see some of the changes of some of these maps. Obviously, this, some of these are pretty dramatic. Like, Godcroft's is basically unrecognizable. You know, St uh, Steam and Landing is a location that has been rumored for a very long time. Fisherman's Row is kind of back to its old self. This is kind of how it debuted with a couple of different <laughs> changes. Um, Ore Breaker is not exactly the way it was before. There's a couple of similar islands there. Um, Conclave has been redesigned, though we still liked the gameplay around it, so we wanted to keep it just kind of tweaking it a little bit to make it a little bit friendlier. Uh, but there, there's a whole bunch of new maps. Um, Fingers has been redesigned a little bit in order to make it look and feel more like a, a coastal map. And uh, Tempest Island is pretty much, again, back to the way it was originally with some, a few new islands. So there's there's three more there's three more maps as well. Uh, there's Reaver's Pass, uh, Silicon Shelf, and the Claustra, which kind of bridge the gaps. And there's been a couple of relocated things, like Port of Rhyme is now in Silicon Shelf, so it's actually at the coast as opposed to or, uh, weathered, which is still a little bit more inland than, than, than it was. Observation tower changes. Okay, so we wanted to give you guys more reason to fight over these islands. The question would come up in our development process is why, why are people attacking islands? What are the point of their existence? Observation towers are one of the ways that we feel this will uh, help expand. The islands have many of these observation towers, the islands and coastlines, not just the islands, where it's a directional intel. It's a very long range, and you can point it in a certain direction to give you intel over a large body of water. Uh, so claiming the islands will give you more intel of the surrounding bodies. I don't think there's much more to say about that, except that we, we put it in the activity log to make sure that you guys can see, uh, you can see who changes it. And yeah, hopefully we're looking forward to feedback about these locations. So we are introducing uh, two new large ships that are, we've been dubbing them kind of the Lodgy ships, but there's more to it than that. Um, this is the bay, uh, bay ship, which is your mobile spawn point on mass. Uh, it is where you're going to be building the landing ships from, uh, like the landing ship. Effectively, you're going to anchor this, and then the players will be able to build landing ships off the side. And then everybody will jump, spawn in the base ship, jump into the landing ship, get all your gear, and uh, like haul to the beach. <laughs> it's easier to supply a pro prolonged seaboard invasion. We noticed that once you guys did make your landing, even if you were successful in taking the first town, it was almost impossible to keep that town supplied for more than a day or two. So we we eased that frustration somewhat. You can deliver armor and field weapons and equipment in quantity. The, the key word here is quantity. We know that you guys would bring tanks on your barges, but you could never keep up. You could never bring enough armor to counter the defender. The defender always had more tanks ready to go. Now we wanted to make sure that you could at least bring some light and uh, some light equipment to the field um, in an equal measure. Um, and now tank, uh, you can... This is probably the most important part. I don't know why I put this last. <laughs> you can safeguard your deployment point against counterattacks. So almost every screenshot we see that comes out on Reddit is of like uh, the side, or... the defender. The defender has like completely encircled the landing ship and is just yeah. on killing everybody there. <laughs> so yeah. now we've created an options options for the uh, attacker to protect their spawn point. And possibly more importantly, um, even if you were successful with your beach landing, as your player group starts to move off the beach, we would see people do sneaky things like bringing in a, a landing craft full of HE grenades to bomb the landing ship from the rear. We protect it against that as well. So essentially, we want to have this Saving Private Ryan type of scenario that actually is a 
that actually has a battle on the beach, like where the front line where players are fighting are at the beach. Um, and that can be a long period of time versus the beach lanes now where you have to pretty much surprise the enemy, not have any combat on a beach and be able to like move inland, capture their base first. That's the big difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So the main, the main takeaway from the spaceship is it, um, it, it's going to replace the white whale that you guys are used to using. Um, we've given it uh, a lot. It's a large ship, so it has all of the bells and whistles we were just talking about with the leaks and the rooms, and you have to protect it. Um, the main takeaway here, though, is you can set your you can you can anchor it, and you can set your spawn to the ship offshore. So you don't have to put your spawn right on the beach. You still can. Um, so if you are if you want to make yourself susceptible to that counterattack, you can. But it's an option that you now have. Um, it's got a couple of uh, side-mounted machine guns that will help you, like the, the newly spawned players, to protect their uh, to protect the spawn point. Um, and it has this automated defense turret, um, which will uh, attack enemy naval ships. So it's not going to it's not going to protect you from the land assault, but it will protect you from minor naval threats. Um, that is to say, anything that's not a large ship. If a if a submarine is coming up on this thing, it's not going to protect you against that. So if I I'm at the home region. I see there's a naval invasion in progress. I go to the deployment map, see the spawn point here, spawn at this base, build a landing craft, which we'll talk more about in a bit, and then use that to actually land on the beach. If you die, you can respawn back here again. Uh, landing ships are fairly basic and exactly what you'd expect from the kind of big cinematic Saving Private Ryan D-Day uh, landing boats. Um, there was a version where we were going to have just a yellow uh, yellow landing ship, just one, but we talked about it and we wanted them to go faction-specific. So you might have noticed that these things are much larger than the original uh, landing ships, and the reason for that is because you can now load tanks onto these things. Tanks, armored cars, scout vehicles, or scout tanks and placements. You can bring equipment to the beach using these things. They're extremely maneuverable. They're very fast. They're um, uh, and they're extremely accessible. They are once the base ship has deployed, it takes almost no time or effort to build one of these things and get it going. So you're not waiting for the guy to finish building this thing, or you're not waiting for the next ship to come back. Uh, you're just gonna build it quickly, hop on, try to. We wanted to reduce the friction of getting from the ship to the beach as much as possible, because the attackers already have enough disadvantages. We wanted to just give you as much as we could. Uh, the last thing is it can be repackaged. Uh, so once you once you get it to the beach, we know this is a little bit strange, but we liked that. Uh, we noticed that one of the hardest things to do during a naval landing is to get somebody to ferry people. It was it's just not something when when the most exciting event is going on. The last thing you want to do is being driving to and from a boat moving people to the beach, even though it was an essential task. So in this case, we've um, done away with that. You only need to ferry one direction. You move the ship to the beach, and then you can return this to BMATs, to its BMAT form, uh, and then uh, to clear up the beach for the next wave. I just wanted to point out something I forgot, which was that the old amphibious landers are still in the game. So if anyone was freaking out that we took them out or something, they're still in the game, though not all the variants survived that transfer. Some work was done on the ramps back when we first introduced the beaches. It was literally the only way you could, only place you could deploy your ramps. You could beach your landing ship, so you couldn't really do a beach landing except in the few places we told you was okay, which allowed the defenders to over prepare on every beach to make sure that you never got anywhere. Now you can land anywhere. These ramps will deploy on all sorts of surfaces. Um, I'm not going to say not literally anywhere. If it's a sheer cliff, you're probably not going to be able to deploy there, but. Um, you could the the number of places you can make your landing is just way more. It's not restricted um, to beaches, though the beaches will still be there. And uh, the storage ship, which is where you're going to get your tanks and field guns and everything else you want on the beach out of and moved. Uh, in the same fashion, the uh, old landing ship is being replaced with it for these two new large ships. Uh, the last, the last piece of the puzzle here for the beach landings is the storage ship. So that landing ship can carry ta light tanks and field weapons to it or on it, um, but you can't. But where do you get them from? So the storage ship is another strategic level asset. It's a very large ship that is meant to bring. It's basically a storage depot on water. It can bring 
uh, crates. So not so you can bring crates of supplies, you can bring vehicles, and those vehicles can drive directly off the ship onto these uh, landing ships, or they can be craned on with a crane that comes. Once the, uh, once the beach has been secured, um, that front of the ship does open up, which allows, the, uh, allows you to drive tanks directly off the platform onto the beach or onto a field. Which brings us to the field pier. We've mentioned it a couple times already, but we haven't actually shown you. What it is, is it's similar to like a Mulberry Harbor uh, from the D-Day landings. You can build a long pier out from the beach to your logistical ships. So perhaps you were performing your naval landing from your base ship from the water. Once you've secured the beach, you can build this out to your base ship so you no longer need bury people to the front. Furthermore, you can dock your let, uh, your storage ship with this field pier, which allows you to directly transfer vehicles to, to the beach. Larger vehicles, not just smaller, lighter, vehicles, but up to medium tanks, anything that could go into a storage deep. And most importantly, but the, in combination with the storage ship, these the field pier and the storage ship are used to supply the landing long term. You can, once you've made your landing, once you've taken your ground, you can continue to bring crates drop it into these ships and then trucks can be brought to those storage ships to pull those crates out and then deliver them to the front line where they need to go. So a, a naval landing could be persisted across multiple days. So the idea here when combining the base ship and the storage ship is to bring the entire logistic chain out into sea, right? So you have your forward base, you have your supply depot essentially, and you can do something very similar that you do on land, but now you can do it at sea. The field bridge is still in, and it is your temporary bridge, and the field pier is just a more permanent thing. Self-propelled artillery. Finally, Julian. <laughs> finally. We know everybody's wanted this for a very long time, and we are finally doing it, adding mobile artillery to the game. And yeah, we um, 150 millimeters, and it does exactly what you think it's going to do. Needs to deploy, needs loaders, gunners, driver. You'll need someone like with binoculars observing. Yeah, it's a great late game piece of artillery. One thing, this is some of the work of our uh, new concept artist. He was relieving me from, so I could focus on getting the feel of boats down, and we all think he did an amazing job on this stuff. Wardens are not forgotten. We, um, in the lore, the um, origins of the flood tank, we wanted to stick to it and uh, have them have a copy of what the colonials are up to. So uh, we thought it was quite fun. So let's talk about the rocket platforms. Rockets, as you know, for those of you that have been with the game for a long time, know that we used to have rocket sites in the game and we had taken a break from them because the game had evolved a lot and we found that because the rockets were put into place many years ago and the game has evolved and we needed to go back and take a look at the rockets again and um, we want to reintroduce them in a way that was more fitting with uh, current voxel gameplay and current voxel content so players are now able to build their own rocket platforms at at the facilities. They're built using rocket parts that are shipped either by flatbed, train, or all the different ways you can ship shippables in the game. And one of the things we want to do, again, tying it to existing content, is now the way that these rockets are used in order to get the targeting information, you actually have to build an intelligence center. So instead of the old method, you, you now have to have an intelligence center. So that ties it into the bunker gameplay. They are tweaked differently from the old rocket, so they can fire into the same or directly neighboring regions. And this is a balance factor that may change at some point, but currently that is the current way it works. And again, it leverages the same the, the same rare alloys that's used in other new high-end content in the game.
arrived, they said that we couldn't do it. And I, I'm just, I don't know what to say. I'm just so excited about this. It's, it's been something I've been, been wanting to talk about and wanting to share just for, for so long. So now, um, certain trucks and half track classes have the capability to tow. Um, they can tow every field weapon in the game now can actually be towed. The way that towing works is it, it's exactly as you see, you back your truck up or your half track into a field weapon or a trailer, and you can use the hitch action and it connects together and it just works like that. Different vehicles are going to have different level of towing power. So not, so when you tow, it will impact the speed of your vehicle. And depending on the engine power of the vehicle, that may change to um, new field weapon mechanics. But now we have the deployable mechanic. And that means that there's certain uh, field guns that are more powerful, but they require deployment. They're difficult to push with infantry, and you need to use towing in order to use them effectively. So this has opened up a lot of doors for us, and it will continue to open up a lot more doors in the future. Let's let's actually get to some of these. Uh, oh, spoilers! Today. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, so these field guns, the players that have already played will know that they are existing weapons that are being adapted to the new um, heavy field chassis. So we, the the seventy five millimeter and the incendiary rocket launchers for the wardens are getting their new chassis and with the, the the deployable state. Colonials were adapting their heavy weapons onto the heavy field chassis, field gun chassis. There will be more in the future to come, but it was more important that we get the existing stuff where it needs to be. We are adding some early game. We wanted to add um, more options for early game. Uh, we always do. And talking with the um, balance team, uh, me and Rob, we were uh, came up with some light uh, early game anti-tank light gun. So the, the faction, uh, the difference in the factions being uh, one is more uh, automatic and one is more single shot heavy. And there's your warden option. We're meant to be themed more around older guns that don't particularly wouldn't see use at once kind of tanks roll out, but they are meant for early game. I want to, I want to say one thing about this. The, we, the wardens needed one more half track for the towing update and me, uh, again, the ba concept art team and balance came up with the Warden's new towing half track, which is weaker on the offense and has less through seats, but it's still pretty damp. Yeah, the Colonials, we are repurposing their armored half track variant because we wanted to basically be looked at what we can do to increase the uses of usage of variant throughout the game. And we decided they had one extra one. They, they got the armored one as their towing and we uh, had to uh, fill the gap for the Wardens. Great. Let's talk about the heavy trucks. So the heavy truck, the heavy-duty truck class is going to be the, the best at towing in the game. When towing, regular trucks will be have their speed a lot more impacted, but the heavy trucks will be impacted far less. And this particular variant for the Colonials will be effective off-road. And yeah, this is going to be the Colonial heavy-duty truck. And we'll move on to the Warden heavy-duty truck. This is, this is the Warden version. It does not perform as well off-road. But like I said, it will be the best towing truck for the Warden faction. So, And now moving on to the transport trailers here. So this is with towing we wanted to give some additional upgrades for logistics and it was an opportunity here so transport trailers can be produced at facilities and they can extend the utility for any vehicle that can tow so that includes like certain half tracks and trucks and they can there's a couple of variants of these actually there's the tumble box lamp loader and the junk wagon the tumble box is able to hold your large ammunition, like artillery ammo, your large facility materials, your metal beam, so on and so forth. And the junk wagon holds scrap. So um, just when you're going on your scrap ones, you can hold a little bit more. And then the fuel one, you're able to put various types of fuel into the game. 